Welcome to Help I'm a Parent, Christian parenting in the real world. We are so happy that you have invited us to enter into your home, your church, or wherever you may be gathered today. We're delighted that you've joined us on this program as we discuss your God-given role of parenting. We're your hosts, Drs. Claudio and Pamela Consuegra. Together we serve as the Directors of Family Ministries for the North American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We believe that one of the most important roles you will ever play is being a parent. In the midst of a secular society, it is so easy to leave God out of the training of our children. The purpose of this series is to not only put God back into that equation, but to place Him at the very center. Parenting stretches us and shapes us like no other experience on this earth. It is a sacred responsibility and there is no higher calling. It is a calling that has its shares of joys as well as challenges. It is a calling that demands a big investment on your part if it is to yield results. And yet, those returns on your investment will last throughout eternity. Today we're going to discuss communication. Communication was easy with your preschool child. In fact, there may have been those moments that you longed for them to be quiet. But your child is not unique if you have discovered that communication between the two of you does not flow as freely in these tween years. Recent research reveals that fewer than half of all sixth graders describe their family communication as positive. What would your children say? How would they describe the communication that exists between you and them? And how would you describe it? Most tweens say that there are things about which they can't talk with their parents because their parents won't listen, won't understand, or they will overreact. Your ability to parent depends on knowing what's happening in your child's life and being able to influence them. And that is directly related to the depth of communication you share. Deep communication is only possible if you find ways to talk about the hard stuff so that your tween feels comfortable sharing any topic with you. Our special guests for today are Jean Clapp and Glenn Milam. Jean is a graduate of Southern Adventist University and has been working as a youth ministries leader for the past 28 years. He and his wife Sherry live in Texas and they've been married for over 41 years and have two young adult children. And Glenn is the director of Mount Etna Camp and Retreat Center in Maryland. He and his wife Darlene are leaders of their local church Pathfinder Club and two Sabbath school departments. Glenn also volunteers as the North American Division Pathfinder Coordinator. They have two children plus dozens of adopted children. In their spare time, they plan week-long history study tours for middle school students. Welcome, Glenn and Jean. We're delighted to have you here with us Thank today. You. We're glad to be here. You know, before we begin our conversation together, we're going to go into the home of the Roberts family, and they're going to talk with us about the challenges of communication through their eyes as parents. So as parents, we want to develop ways to engage in healthy communication with kids and beat the peers out uh, for getting what our values are, what our biblical values are across to them. And one of the things that we instilled a long time ago was family dinner is family dinner. I fell out. Fell out recess on the blacktop. What happened? Were you guys playing football or something? Mm -hmm. And that's where, around the table when we're eating, we engage that conversation, and that's where you'll hear all the good and bad. And then he was going to go catch it, mm -hmm. but I was going for it too, and I was right next to those parking things. Oh, yeah. And I tripped on that plus Zao. Was Zao hurt? No, he never is. He's the one who hurts me. What we tried to develop is a, a means of communication regardless of any um, fallout, any fallout, positive or, or negative type repercussion, knowing that you know, you're responsible for yourself and for your actions. And if you've done something wrong, we need to talk about it. And if, if there is a consequence, then you, we will talk about the consequence and you will understand why there is a consequence. Luke, why are you playing with my Legos? You weren't playing with them. I didn't tell you you could. Daddy, he took something I was playing with. 
getting them to express their feelings to one another in a respectful way is, is challenging, uh, and it's an everyday task. Josh? What happened? Luke was playing with my Legos. We're trying to teach them that, you know, not only we're, we're a family and they are brothers and they need to be able to communicate with each other even when they don't agree with each other. There's a way to do that and it's a respectful way. And it wasn't right for him to play with your Legos without asking, but you don't grab. You need to come and get one of us and we'll help you resolve the situation. <clears throat> It's so key to setting that tone for the bigger topics. If you can get through and let them understand that um, we're here for you on everything big and small, um, it opens up for the next, the, the bigger stuff. That trust is there. It's interesting that point that she just made that talking about the small things can lead to the bigger things. Mm -hmm. Is that the, the way it should be with oh, absolutely. queens? Absolutely. And, and the real challenge is that it starts much earlier. You, you start that when they're little toddlers uh. of having that conversation <laughs> of, of them trusting you. Uh, Mr. Roberts there made the comment of, of respect. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're watching you and, and, you know, other adults communicate with each other mm -hmm. and they're learning from that. So you're looking at the parents being the pattern for the for kids' what communication. what the kids are going to do. You need to create an environment where the, the young people feel comfortable talking with the, uh, with the parents. Mm -hmm. And the parents need to also have a, a feeling of comfortableness of talking with their kids. Mm -hmm. And if you are able to do that, then you are on the, on the, the road towards good communication. But Jean, I want you to talk a little bit how do we do that as parents when today, uh, for the most part, our children would rather be engaged with technology? You know, I've got, I've got my earphones on. I'm engaging in Facebook time more than I am in face-to-face -face time. So how do we as parents encourage that face-to-face -face communication with our children? Probably... Uh, one of the best things is to be in environments, uh, in activities where the, uh, the young people will feel comfortable. Uh, I've been in Sabbath school classes uh, where the kids are, are no longer engaged in the Sabbath school program, mm -hmm. but they're, they're just working their, their devices, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's Twitter, whether it's uh, uh, Instagram or, or, or whatever, other, texting mm -hmm. constantly. And a lot of it is because they just have no interest in what's going on. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do as parents is try to engage them in activities where they are interested and uh, in a lot of cases overcoming their interest in the the digital. And again, they're watching and modeling what we do. Dad come home from, comes home from work, plops down in front of the TV. That's his mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. Mom comes home, she's exhausted, she gets on the phone, talks to her mom, talks to her friends, and so they're seeing this same kind of thing. We've noticed in, in so many interactions with families, uh, maybe even in our own, that we run into the situation where families do nothing together. There isn't anything. Right. You ask the children, what are you interested in? nothing uh -huh. because they don't actually go and do anything. Mom and dad come home. There's mm -hmm. no activity that creates those prime moments when you can have mm -hmm. conversations. But what happens when the child comes home and you say, well, how was school? And they just say, fine. Uh, well, <laughs> the catch there is when you, come, when you come home, you probably don't want to talk either. <laughs> you know, we need to give them that breathing space. Uh -huh. They get in the car, they've had a tough day. Someone will blow up at you and they'll start talking and others just sit there sullenly. Right. Well, you're going to learn the process of, wait, give them a half hour. Yeah. Let them go home and throw a sock against the wall a couple of times, <laughs> and then they're ready to come and talk to you. But okay. you've got to be the adult. You've got to be sensitive to okay. those kinds of things. One of the, another key point is that we need to pay attention to our kids. Mm -hmm. Don't just ignore them. Don't just mm -hmm. think that they're just somebody who lives in the house with us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We're all a family together, and let's be interested in each other. Uh, is has been said a lot, respect them, mm -hmm. but also respect the fact they may not want to talk at that particular yeah. time. Okay. Don't force it. Okay. Don't say, you need to tell me right now mm -hmm. what is happening at school. But you did say pay attention. So right. in other words, be interested in what they're interested in. That's right. And okay. they've been with you 
for their entire life in most cases. Uh -huh. And so you should be aware of those kinds of things and be sensitive to those kinds of issues. Uh, another key point I think on the activity issue is that we each have things that are interesting to us but they are not always exactly the same. My dad was big into model railroading. Mm. In that, it, it taught mm -hmm. me a love of miniatures, but I have no interest in the railroading mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. But I still, as, a, as an adult child, I go to model railroading events with him mm. because mm -hmm. of that interest. Mm -hmm. And he goes to plastic scale modeling events with me okay. because he wants to see my interest. Ah. My son Dow now does historic miniature war gaming. Uh -huh. We go to those events. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna play, I'm gonna sit there and encourage him. Yeah. But we make a point of, of committing that time yeah. to building each other's interest. So it's not mm -hmm. always about it's not me always and about my me, interest. even as the parents. Yours and the others, right. yeah, sure. So if we can lock into those interests, then by engaging in those activities together, we're automatically opening up opportunities for, for conversation and communication to happen. Absolutely. My father was a, uh, a really <clears throat> diligent woodworker. And as he was, as my brother and I were growing up, we would spend a lot of time with him in the wood shop. And that became, after we had gotten through the, the basic skills uh, that he would teach us, that would leave us a lot of time for discussion, just an environment where we could talk. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a safe place. Uh -huh. Some people uh, think that communication means only talking. Uh -huh. uh, but obviously, and, and you sort of mentioned that, communication also involves Active listening. Right. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Active listening is, well, Stephen Covey had a, had a statement that he said, when we are listening, we want to understand mm -hmm. and we want to be understood. Uh -huh. And what we're doing when we're active listening is sometimes we are restating what people will say, uh -huh. what our young people will say to us. Sometimes they may say it in a way that they're not really even sure what they've said, right. mm -hmm. but they've gotten the words out. Uh -huh. And there are some, some practical things that you can do to achieve that. Uh, I used to be a dean of men at a university, and I, I always had a list of tasks that I was in the office working on, and a resident would come in and want to talk, and I'm typing and talking to them. <laughs> and I finally realized, you know, I'm failing at my primary task. Yeah. And it relates right back to dealing right. with my own yeah. children, uh, to put down what I'm doing, to go over it, sit next to them, turn the chair around, look them in the eye, lean forward and listen to them. Mm. And suddenly it's been three hours and yeah. you realize you have just been totally immersed mm -hmm. in the conversation. And that because might be you gave just it. what they're That's looking right. mm -hmm. for. You gave needed. it complete, absolute center. Yeah. You know, to be able to reach out and put a hand on their knee, to, to be mm -hmm. able to give them a small gift at a, a time when they're not expecting it. All sorts of things say, this person cares about me, they're concerned about me, they think about me when they're not with me. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, to send a postcard home, you're away on a business trip, and to send a postcard home to the kids, they don't even know what a postcard is, yeah. but to get mail yeah. for them, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those opportunities. And how does that there. translate, because you're talking about Dean of College, College or Pathfinders, how does that translate to the parents? It's exactly the same issue. That, that when you recognize, and we were having conversation earlier about our own families, when you recognize that there's a need, there is virtually nothing else that should take precedent over mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm getting ready to walk up on the platform to give a sermon and my son wants to talk, well, okay, maybe we'll <laughs> need to wait. But if I'm at home and I'm working on the lawnmower or whatever, you know, that can wait. That can right. wait. I, it, I had an instance when I was a young man or uh, in the tween age. Uh -huh. And I, it was a biblical question. And my dad was my, my elementary school teacher uh -huh. for this particular school year. And one Friday afternoon, we had had a discussion in school that I, I, I just wasn't quite understanding. And this particular discussion had to do with the difference between the power of choice and predestination. Mm. And it, it pretty deep subject for, for a young yeah. man, a young boy. And my dad, I, was busy preparing for Friday night and, and, and preparing for the Sabbath. And my dad saw that I had a question about it. And I, I, I said, dad, I want to understand. And he said, let's talk about it. And we talked about it for at length. Uh -huh. 
Oh. And I understood when I got done. So he took the time to listen to your concern and then to explain or, or, or reason with you as to what uh, you were thinking about. Yes. Thank you for this. This is very important. We're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we'll continue talking with Glenn and Jean about the importance of communication with the tweens in your family. You can probably already tell that we will not be able to cover every area, every concern, or every question you may have in the short time that we have together. Parenting will continue to produce new challenges and new questions every day. As our children grow and change, so do the parenting challenges we face. And therefore, our goal is to continue this conversation with up-to-date resources and practical parenting tips that you can apply in your day-to-day -day parenting journey. We will do this online via our website, www.helpimaparent.org. And there you may keep up to date on all of our newly released parenting resources, supplemental products, and even find additional materials to download free of charge. You're also invited to submit any questions that were not answered for you, subscribe to a, an electronic newsletter, read a blog for parents, and much more. Again, the accompanying website is helpimaparent.org. And in addition to that website, we also have a Facebook page where we post daily words of encouragement and resources. So look us up on Facebook, Help, I'm a Parent. And remember, share that Facebook post with the friends in your social network. It is our desire that this resource will assist you in your God-given role as a parent by using principles that are firmly grounded in the Word of God. Now let's get back to our conversation with today's guests. Welcome back to our conversation regarding communication with our tween children. We want to talk a little bit about the difference between reacting and responding. Can you talk to us about that? Whenever we as parents come on a situation, we saw in the, in the, the Roberts uh, video earlier that, uh, that the father actually responded because he was uh, wanting to uh, make sure that he understood before he took action. There is something that's called a knee-jerk reaction. It's, it's something that we see something and automatically we, we, we put forward on mm -hmm. it. And we, we make a response. Almost instinctively. Instinctively. And unfortunately for we as humans, our instinct is to lash out. If something is not how we think it should be, then we're going to fix it. And whenever one of our child, uh, children have... Uh, they're not doing exactly what we want them to be doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We tend to lash out at them and say, well, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. That's the reaction. Why didn't, why didn't you do it right? You know, why did you hit your brother? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? And, and even in many cases, unfortunately, there's a physical reaction as well. Mm -hmm. We want to slap, we want to hit, or, or maybe we're, we're a little more controlled, but we use our voices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it is not a, a normal reaction for us to respond the way that we should. Mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a learned behavior. Instead so of reacting, we need to respond. So much of our culture is, is based on um, jumping and belittling and demeaning right. mm -hmm. and embarrassing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the way we get ahead. That's mm -hmm. climb up on top. Right. But and if Christians, if, that's just the opposite of what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And as parents, we need to pray about this behavior in ourselves mm -hmm. because it is something that is not a natural thing. Mm -hmm. There's an old mm -hmm. phrase everybody knows, a uh, failure to plan is a plan to fail. Mm -hmm. And I think in parenting, we often step back and we don't plan. Uh, when Darlene and I first were expecting our first Sydney, um, we sat down and had conversations on virtually every commute back and forth to work mm -hmm. about serious topics that might at some point come up in raising children up mm -hmm. through college. Right. And we had those conversations and we came to agreements on how we were going to respond. You know, with the change in decorum mm -hmm. and dress code, what happens when our daughter comes and says, oh, guess what? Topless bathing is now the thing. <laughs> Are we ready for mm -hmm. that? Hasn't gone that direction. Yeah. But we had a plan mm -hmm. already set out. Right. Um, if they come and want to do this or want to do that, what are we going to do so that we are on the same page 
and on the same plan, and we've already thought about it, that we may be stunned a little bit, whoa, there it was, right. but we're not unprepared. That's because wonderful advice. You, ahead of you time. talked with your wife beforehand and agreed on the types of conversations you would have oh, and all that. Absolutely. So that's very important, yeah. as opposed to you reacting or responding either way and your spouse doing it uh, differently. Right. And when oh. you do that, you are prepared. Yeah. Because, you know, you talked, Glenn, about how reacting and responding, reacting is an instinct. And definitely when we react, we haven't thought it out. Mm. We haven't planned, and so you're giving us another option. Really consider, consider before it happens. It's, it's a common thing that when we are reacting, our voice level goes up, mm. the, our volume goes up. Yeah. And when you're responding, it is a very proven fact. Pretty that, neutral even. That mm -hmm. if you will lower your voice, mm. physically and intentionally lower your voice, uh -huh that the tension will remove, or at least it will lessen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can lower it to the point where you terrify them when you get that, <laughs> you are going to do right. what I said. Yeah. Not quite that Not far. that, not, not that lower. The ideal is, again, that you can plan ahead, but what if, uh, you know, those times when they throw you that curve and you are totally unprepared, what would you do? A lot of times you need to just stop. Stop everything that you're doing and take a deep breath mm -hmm. and say a quick prayer. Lord, help me. Mm. I don't know what to do. Yeah. But if you've practiced that and 99 times out of 100 you respond rather than react, mm. once in a while the reaction is forgivable. They'll say, oh, wow, well, they funny. weren't ready for that. Yeah. You know, and, and you can That's come funny. back afterwards and say, you know, kids, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I messed um, up. I messed up. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I wasn't ready for that. That's not the way I normally respond. Mm -hmm. That's not the way I want to respond. Will you forgive me? You know, as, as parents, it's a joy to talk with our children about their I successes, know. the things that are going good in their lives. But I also need to be willing to talk with them about their challenges. So as a parent, you know, what are the topics that I should be willing to address with my, with my child? Are there things where I draw the line? or I, I have a one-word answer for you. Anything. There you go. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, agreed. Anything. Yeah. There and should be nothing that you can't touch. Right. That's especially right. as mm -hmm. they're entering tween. They're in that, mm -hmm. that period where they're kind of stretching. Of Peers questions. are becoming more important, their attitudes. And again, if they have built up that relationship ahead of yeah. time and they recognize that they can bring anything to you uh -huh. and be willing to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, again, we're not real purposeful about this kind of thing. You know, they're watching a TV show and a sensitive subject comes up. Um, are you prepared at the end of the show to say, what do you think about that? You don't have to preach mm -hmm. at them mm -hmm. right. and say, wow, that kind of made me feel uncomfortable. What about you? Just dialogue. Mm. But you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the discussion can come about as a result of questions that you ask. You're not preaching to them, as Glenn mentioned. Mm. You're not preaching to them. What you're doing is asking them questions and helping them to discover what they really do feel mm -hmm. about it, uh -huh. where, they, where they're comfortable, where they're not comfortable. And when they do that, they begin a course of self-discovery. And if you're teaching them values, they will incorporate those values into what they, what they like and they mm -hmm. don't like. You and can clearly state your point, your <clears throat> belief, you can back it up. You're beginning to move from being the, the dictator caregiver to the mentor, uh -huh. uh, that mm -hmm. kind of a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have to recognize, again, he said it at the beginning of that clip, you, of the, the respect that that's right. They have the right to formulate their opinion. You may disagree with it, and we can have that conversation, and we want you to think more of it, and maybe there's a no. This is not <laughs> happening here. You, you have to be the parent. So, so let's say that there are times when that conversation with my tween child takes the wrong turn, and it has now passed. It's no longer a respectful mm. conversation. You know, what are some things I can do as a parent to to stop that trend and get us back on the right track. Yeah. Well, again, we're, we're the adults and you have to recognize mm. those signals and say, 
This is the same conversation we have three times a week. It's not working. (laughs) <laughs> we're going to react differently. Yeah. We're going to make a plan yeah. of yeah. responding and you got to stick with it because they're used to pushing certain buttons oh, yeah. and yeah. they're used to your responding certain ways. Yeah. And I think that's why t- kids tend to be a little more afraid of dad. They don't hang out with him as much. <laughs> they're not quite sure yeah. how he's going to respond. Yeah. And probably mom needs to pick up on that a little bit. And <laughs> But there again, you're going to find that they're it, it depends on which parent that they go to mm-hmm. for certain subjects. subjects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the more sensitive subjects, they may go to mom. The more manly subjects, the uh, the things that, and I'm not trying to say anything about that, but you know, things pertaining to work, uh, sometimes pertaining to relationships, mm. they might talk to dad about What if about you're that. a single parent? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get double duty. Yeah. Mm, so, so you don't ignore so that, certain topics. That's where yeah. mentors like Pathfinder counselors right. can play a role. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, I tell the parents of my own units that I will conversate with these kids on anything they bring up. I will let you know afterwards what it was. But if they come mm-hmm. with a question, I've got to answer them. Yeah. We also say in, in our youth Sabbath school classes and, and even in, in, the, in the juniors and early teens, this is a safe place yeah. in our Sabbath school class. You can say whatever you want. Mm-hmm. It's not going back to your parents. You know, we could talk about conversation and communication <laughs> all day long, but unfortunately, <laughs> our time has come to an end. We do thank you for your ideas. Your thoughts yes. have been very practical. And again, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much you. for thank inviting you. us to be thank part of this. Thank you for having us here. And we also want to thank you for joining us as we explored some of the challenges keeping those lines of communication open with our children. Now it's time for you to open your parenting manual that accompanies this resource. Read the material over and discuss any thoughts or questions that come to mind with your group members. To help you get started, we have included some discussion questions and group activities. We also want to remind you to visit our parenting website, helpimaparent.org, and there you will find many additional resources and materials. As much as you love your children, God loves them even more. He has appointed you as their stewards, their caretakers during their lives on earth. More important, He has entrusted you with the task of preparing them for their forever home in heaven with Him. God never said that parenting would be easy, but He did say that He would never leave us or forsake us. The Creator who knit our children together in the womb and has numbered the very hairs on their heads holds the blueprint for their lives. Claim his promise and invite him to co-parent with you. Join us next time on Help, I'm a Parent, Christian Parenting in the Real World, when we will discuss the topic, Rules and Rebellion, as it relates to preteens. Until then, it is our prayer that the lines of communication will be open between you and your child so that together you can talk about their joys as well as their challenges. And we also pray that the direct lines of communication toward heaven will be open as you both talk to their heavenly Father. May the sunshine of God's love shine on your family today.